Hello, welcome to class. I hope you're ready to punch, kick, and of course, stretch, as you might have guessed from the name of the class. Uh, the Moxie music is on. You can control it um, yourself in terms of volume. Click on the musical notes on the bottom left. Um, I'm not listening to it myself because my headset is uh, giving me so much trouble. Um, but it's on so you can listen to it if you want. Up to you. So we're going to start a couple moments just uh, warming up and uh, then we'll get into it. So separate your feet a little wide apart. We're just going to do some plies and also stretching up tall. So let's take a, a big inhale, reaching the arms up, stretching tall. And as you exhale, let the arms come down and bend the knees sinking down into your plie, aka squat with the feet turned out. Just a more, couple more times like that. Inhaling and exhaling. And as you start to do a few more, you can start to bend the knees even more. You might separate the feet a little wider apart if that helps um, in terms of going down into your plie a little bit more. And just taking some big breaths in as you go. You can even just do a big kind of sighing out or ha sound on your exhale as you lower down. And a couple more. And then coming up, I'm just gonna reach up really, really tall and then do a nice big side stretch over to one side, letting the arm come down on that side, just trying to slide it down on your leg a little tiny bit more. And then inhale, arms up, and go to the other side. And we'll just do that a couple times more each side. Inhale, and side bend. Inhale, exhale, as you go into your side bend. Good. One more time on this side. We're going to stay on this side a little bit. And we'll back up a little bit, a little bit more here. So top hand, you're going to keep it reaching up. And then sort of turn a little bit to look up towards that hand, turn the palm forward and start reaching back. So the palm starts to face up a little bit and just let that opening start to happen in the front of the shoulder and the pec area here on that side. And then bring that arm down, other arm up, big inhale. Just go into your side stretch as, as you exhale. And then we'll stay for a couple more breaths, looking up towards that hand, letting the arm go back, and letting the palm start to turn up towards the ceiling. Nice big stretch in the front of the shoulder, again on this side. Good, both arms up again. Big inhale and exhale. And now we're gonna work on our fighting stance to begin with. Checking out um, everything that we need to have in order for a good fighting stance. So, as before, doesn't matter which foot you put in front first because we'll always switch and do the other side. So, whichever front, uh, foot you want to put in front first, looking down at your feet, shoulder width between the feet, front foot is pointing basically straight forward, back foot is angled out to the side. These angles and positions will change as you do different techniques and you shift. Um, your weight from foot to foot. This is just how you start. Your hand's gonna be up, tight fists, little bit of bend in the knee, a little bit of springiness, not locking into one position for too long, always being a little bit mobile, a little bit, a little bit fluid. We're also gonna talk about shifting the weight, swiveling on the balls of the feet. So let's start just keeping the hands up, elbows tucked down, and just lift your back heel, swivel to face more forward. Put that heel down, lift your front heel, and swivel to face to the side. I'm just gonna go back and forth a couple times. So this is a very basic movement that will start to happen more and more when you do different uh, punches, and we'll get to that in a moment. You can feel how your weight shifts, and you can also notice when you turn or pivot on the balls of the feet, the legs 
change as well. It's not just the feet, right? So for instance, when the front heel comes up, the whole leg, the whole front leg sort of turns in a little bit to bring you into that sideways facing position. And the opposite happens with the back foot lifting. This back leg will turn in a little bit, okay? So switch sides, do a few on this side, same way, back heel up, front heel up, and let your upper body go with that movement. Turning the body like this is what actually gives your punches more power, so you're not just standing still and trying to knock someone out with just your arm. You know, if you can put your whole body weight behind it, it becomes much more powerful. And that's why we do this. That's one of the reasons we do it. It's just correct technique, right? So go back to your first side. We'll call that side one for you, whichever foot that is in front for you. So starting on side one, a couple more things about your fighting stance. You wanna have your chin tucked down a little bit so you're not jutting it out, asking to be it, right? but you're not also um, you know, looking down or hunching the shoulders, okay? So your back is straight. Little bit of engagement in the core as if you're about to do a crunch, okay? So you can feel that engagement, like before you would actually move your body to the shape of a crunch, you would start with just a little bit tightening there. You can kind of hold on to that as you go. As always, the more you move around, in between your techniques, in between counts, the more you're gonna get your cardio going. So you can always do that. Think of staying light on your feet, constantly shifting around. If it becomes too much, then you can kind of slow that down and just work on the combination itself. Okay, so starting on your side one, as usual, we're gonna start very basic with our jab and cross, so jab, as you turn to the side, swiveling on the ball of the front foot, jab towards the face with your front hand. Okay, so I'm gonna say front instead of right or left because it might be different for you. Whatever hand is in front, jab. And then cross with your back hand. When the back hand comes out, swivel up on the ball of the back foot and turn to face more forward. And notice, whichever, whichever hand is not punching, should stay up, you know, somewhere in front of the face um, in that area for protection. So let's start 10 counts, jab cross on this side, and then we'll switch and do the other side. So as usual, you can stay light on the feet. You can keep the heels, especially just a tiny bit off the floor or just, you know, very much light, not a lot of weight in the heels. And ready? One, jab, cross. Two, jab, cross. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. And switch to the other side. Of course, the first combination we're doing, still warming up, so you might not be doing like, you know, as strong or as much power as you uh, will do later in class. And after you warm up a little more, it's fine to just keep it a little bit gentle to begin with. So other stance, your side two. Now the other hand is in front, so that hand is gonna do the jab, and then cross with the back hand. Let's go for 10, ready? One, jab, cross. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Good. And go back to the first side. So now we're going to add our little bit of a bob and weave. I'm just call, I'm going to call it a duck, just to keep it simple. So you're back on side one, you're going to do jab, cross, and then you're going to imagine someone's trying to maybe hit you in the head, and you're going to do a little bit of a duck towards the side of your cross hand, okay? So whatever hand is in front is your jab, crosses the back hand, you're gonna do a little bit of a U shape, whoop, duck, towards the side of your back hand or your back leg, whichever one you wanna think of it as, okay? So the combination is just gonna be jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, all right? 
So let's try that for 10. Again, as always, you want to have already have the knees a little bit bent, a little bit uh, fluid, not never locking the legs, right? So you're just going to emphasize the bend of the knee a little bit more and do this little U-shaped movement. The more you go down, you know, the better it would be in terms of actually avoiding a technique, right? But also the more it's going to become like a squat. So it's going to work your legs more. So if it becomes too much, you feel like you're getting way out of breath. Instead of stopping, you can just keep it a really, really small duck if that's what can um, make it so you can keep going and, and handle uh, continuing in class. So let's try 10. Jab, cross, duck, jab, cross. All right, ready? One, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, and switch sides. It's a little chilly where I am, but um, getting warm, I might have to take my sweatshirt off here. So side two, same thing. Jab, cross, duck towards the side of your back hand. Jab, cross again. Ready, one, duck, jab, cross. Two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, very good. And go back to side one. So now we're going to add at the very end another hand technique, hook. Okay, so after jab, cross, duck, second one, jab, cross. Your front hand after the cross is going to come around for your hook punch. So if there's someone standing in front of you coming around sort of on the side, maybe hitting them the sides of the ribs, something like that. Otherwise, everything's the same. We're just adding hook at the end. So let's go for 10. Ready? One, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook. Okay, so you can imagine someone's standing in front of you. If you're doing the punch, it would stop right about here. All right? Sometimes you see people do like a whole big circle around. It's not realistic if you're trying to actually hit someone. All right, two. Jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Very good. Okay, and switch to side two. Same way, adding your hook punch at the end. So it's jab, cross, duck the other direction. Jab, cross, front hand comes around, hook. Let's try ten. Ready? One, two, three, four, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, five, six, hook. 
confusing myself for some reason. Seven, jab, cross. Duh, jab, cross, hook. Eight. Nine. Ten. Very good. All right. Just give me one second. I am going to take off my sweatshirt now. Starting to warm up a little bit more. Okay, so we're going to continue adding one more hand technique. Okay, so going back to side one, same thing, jab, cross, little duck, jab, cross, hook, and as usual, we're going to follow up our hook punch with a uppercut. So your backhand coming up, palm stays facing up, maybe angling up a little bit, maybe going into someone's rib, rib cage, something like that. Okay, one second. Okay, all right. Otherwise, everything else is the same, just adding up front at the end. Let's try it together. Ready? One, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Two, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, all right, and switch sides. Go to side two. Same way, everything's the same, just adding uppercut at the end. All right, ready? One, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Two, three, up, jab, cross, hook, uppercut. I wanna do the hook and the duck at the same time. So, sorry, one, uh, that was three, four, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. All right, and go back to side one. All right, so finally we're gonna add kicks. We're gonna add one kick at the very beginning. So whatever leg is in front, we're gonna do a front kick. So just bring the knee up in front, kick forward, and then continue, same technique, uh, same combination we just did. So as always, when you start picking up your legs for kicking, it's going to bump up your cardio. So you can always start off slow just to test it out, maybe just lifting the foot to start with. Once you get used to it, then you can try lifting a little bit higher. And then next stage after that, if you want to, would be doing the full kick. All right, so everything is adjustable for you. So let's start side one, 10 times. Ready, one, kick, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Two, front kick, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Three, kick. Four. Five, six, jab, cross, hook, up, seven, eight, 
eight, nine, ten. All right, and switch sides. So other leg is in front now, and you're gonna do your front kick with that leg. So again, knee comes up in front. Your choice if you want to snap the foot out for the kick or just start with lifting the knee. Otherwise, everything's the same as before. Ready? One, front kick, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. All right, and go back to side one. All right, we're going to continue adding at the end of the combination now. So same as before, starting with the front kick, go through your combination. You would end with uppercut. Uppercut is done by your back hand, correct? So now your front hand, your front arm, you're going to come around and do elbow. So roundhouse elbow strike to someone's face. So it's a very good self-defense technique. Boom. And then finish one more cross punch. All right. So I'll do the first one slowly. We're just adding elbow and one more cross punch at the end. All right. So ready? One. Kick, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, elbow, finish cross punch. Come back. Two, elbow, cross. All right, so know that, you know, if you don't have the right sequence, you leave something out of the combination, don't sweat it, okay? It's not the time to get all hung up on, you know, being perfectly correct in terms of the combination. More important is to just keep trying, keep moving, and eventually it'll all come together. All right, three. Elbow, cross. Four, kick, jab, cross. Five. Six. Seven. Look, uppercut, elbow, cross. Eight. Hook, uppercut, elbow, cross. The hook and the elbow are almost the same, right? So you have to uh, make sure you're doing the right one. Uh, or if you do the wrong one, again, not a big deal. I think it's nine next. Nine. Elbow, cross. There we go. Ten. and switch sides okay so slowly on the first one to get the combination same thing adding elbow with your front arm finishing one last time with your cross punch backhand okay ready one kick jab cross duck jab 
cross, hook, uppercut, elbow, cross. All right, two. Three, kick, jab, cross, hook, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, elbow, cross. I almost said hook when I meant to say duck. Ah, uh, what number's next? I don't know. Five, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, elbow, punch. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Did I just leave out a whole bunch of stuff? I think I did, sorry. Let's get this last one right. 10, kick, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, elbow, punch. All right, so switch back to side one. So you'll notice, again, if you're doing the full body movement of turning into your techniques, turning back, it's gonna be not just making your techniques actually powerful, more powerful, it's also more of a whole body workout. So that's another reason we want to build up to doing that. Next, we are going to add knee kick at the very end with your back leg, okay? To so go through the whole thing, whole combination. Excuse me, let me grab tissue. Okay. So you finish whole combination would be with your cross punch coming out side of your back leg. That's the leg that's gonna do the knee kick. So after your cross punch, reach forward for your opponent's shoulder, knee kick, put the foot back down. All right, that's all we're adding this time. And after this, we'll add turning, okay, to finish up. So 10 times on side one, ready, one, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, elbow, cross, reach, knee kick, come back. Two, kick, jab, cross, hook, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, elbow, cross, knee, three, Knee kick. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Kick, jab, cross. Duck, jab, cross, hook. Uppercut, elbow, Cross, knee kick. Is this 10? I think this is 10. 10. There we go. All right, and switch to your side two. Door open sometimes when there's a draft, sorry. Okay, side two, same technique, everything the same. After the last punch, your back hand is doing your cross punch, reach forward, back leg, knee kick. 
Try when you're doing your knee kick to have your toes pointing down. It's gonna kind of toughen up, holding the kneecap in place, kind of uh, firms up the knee so that you can actually use it as a weapon. If the foot is relaxed, the kneecap is kind of floating around, it could get an injured if you hit something with that kneecap. So pointing the toe strongly helps hold the kneecap in place. Good reason to do that. Okay, so 10 on this side. Ready? One, front kick, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, elbow, cross, reach for your knee kick. Two. Three, kick, jab, cross, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, elbow, cross, knee kick. So two or three, so hard to keep count. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Ah, totally. Okay, uppercut, elbow, cross, then knee kick. This speeding head there. Ah, uh, seven. Hook, uppercut, elbow, cross, knee kick. Eight. Nine. Eight. Ten. And finish, go to the other side. All right, so here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna introduce our turning. So as before, we're gonna finish, uh, we're gonna do the same combination. Once we finish, after the knee kick, you'll be here, bring your foot back, look to the side of your front leg, whichever way it is. For me, this is my front leg, so I'm gonna go this way. You might be going the other way, it doesn't matter. You're gonna to look to the side of your front leg and do your roundhouse kick, and then turn in that direction. All right, so as we found before, to do a proper roundhouse kick without hurting yourself, the standing foot needs to be turned out. In other words, the toes are turning away from where you're kicking, the heel is angling towards where you're kicking. So that's why we're doing it to the side. Eventually we'll work up to doing it forward, or you can, Pressing it forward, it's totally fine. But in the combination, it's gonna help us go into our turn. So the foot of your standing leg is already turned out when you're in fighting stance facing here, so that when you go to the side, you don't have to switch or move that foot too much. You notice when I did it just then, I did pivot a little bit more. It's optional to do that if you kick um, kind of low, like maybe you're kicking, you think you're kicking like someone here, you don't need to turn out as much. To get the height to kick higher, you might need to turn your foot out even more to allow the pelvis to tilt up on the standing leg. So it's all, again, adjustable. Sorry, while I blow my nose a little bit. And you can adjust to suit your needs. So, Again, same combination we just did. I'll do the first one slowly. At the end, look to the side of your front leg, roundhouse, and then turn. And we'll keep turning. We'll do five going this way. So we come back to the face front on the last one. And then we'll switch and go five the other way. All right? This might be our final um, 
punch kick combination. So let's go number one a little bit slowly. One, front kick, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, elbow, cross, knee kick. Bring it back, look to the side of your front leg, roundhouse, and turn in that direction. Same way, number two, front kick, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, elbow, cross, knee kick, look back, roundhouse, turn in that direction. Three, kick, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, elbow, cross, Knee kick, look to the side, roundhouse, turn. Four, front kick, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, elbow, cross, knee kick, look forward again, roundhouse, turn. Five, kick, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, Elbow cross, knee kick, and you can do your last roundhouse to the side or forward if you want to try that. All right, so we did five going that way. We're going to switch sides and go for five. We'll just be turning the other way because I'm now the other foot's in front. When you go to do your roundhouse, you look to the side of that front leg, roundhouse, and then turn that way. All right, so let's try it together slowly on the first one. Ready, one, kick, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, elbow, cross, knee kick, bring it back, look to the side of your front leg, roundhouse, and turn. Two, kick, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, elbow, cross, knee kick, Bring it back, look behind, roundhouse, turn. Three, kick, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, elbow, cross, knee kick, look to the other side, roundhouse, turn. Four, kick, jab, cross, duck, jab, cross, hook, uppercut, elbow, Cross, knee kick, looking forward, roundhouse, turn, last one, five. And last roundhouse you can do to the side, either way, it's fine. All right, and then shake it out a little bit. So we are doing well on time. We're gonna come down onto the floor in a moment to do some more stretches. Let's just take a moment here to bring the breath a little bit down. Just separate the feet. Feet can be a little bit turned out. We're gonna keep the legs straight. Just inhale, stretching the arms up. And then exhale, bring your hands to center, prayer pose. Next time, inhale, sweep the arms up and exhale. Bring the hands down in prayer. One more time, inhale, big, big breath, and then exhale, bring it on down. Good. So let's grab our mats or move to our mats, and we're going to do some nice stretches and a couple poses just for fun. So have my nice big round mat. First, we're gonna go, come to a rag doll forward fold. So feet can be wide apart, feet more parallel to each other. Bend your knees, sit back, and bring your hands down to the floor. If it's hard to get the hands to the floor, just put uh, a chair in front of you, bring your hands to the seat of the chair. If you have blocks, you can always use yoga blocks. But try to bend your knees, as much as you can, and then maybe you can get the fingers to the floor. And then drop the head, 
Shake out the head, yes and no. The knees can be bent so much that your upper body might even be kind of resting on the tops of the thighs. You can either stay like this, just continue letting the head dangle, or you can fold the arms, holding opposite elbows, and also just try releasing the weight of the arms, maybe swinging the arms back and forth. Really anything that starts to feel good to so stretch out your back, releasing the spine, spine coming upside down, so we can just really let it go. Maybe a little bounce, maybe swaying the upper body side to side. And then finally, bring the hands to the floor. You can start to straighten out the legs any amount. Okay, so keep the feet wide apart. They might be shoulder width or a little bit wider. And just play with trying to straighten the legs. Okay, no need to straighten them fully. Maybe just try seeing how far you can get them to go towards straight. And take another couple breaths, just releasing the weight of the upper body. Now we're going to keep the right foot forward and step the left foot back. And try to bring it pretty far back behind you. I'm going to do this at a little bit of an angle here. And drop that left knee to the floor. So we're just going to stay like this for a couple moments, really far forward. Okay, so I'm putting my upper body like really just on top of this front leg. All right, just taking a couple breaths there. And then I'm just going to start walking the hands back, shifting the hips straight back. Maybe until the front leg straightens out. Maybe not. We're just going to go back and forth a few times. So inhale, forward, exhale, back. So the upper body stays kind of angled forward throughout. Inhale, forward, exhale, back. One more time, just like this. Just taking your time so you can get used to the movement. Maybe going a little bit further each time. Good. Next time you come forward, I'm going to stay. I'm going to bring one hand and then the other onto the top of that front knee, starting to raise the torso up towards vertical. From here, start to push into your hands a little bit and come all the way up vertical. So you might back up a little bit in your lunge instead of having the weight so far forward. Coming more to vertical. I'm going to stay here a couple breaths. You can either keep the hands where they are or take a big breath in and reach the arms up parallel to each other, hands, uh, palms facing in. Really, really reaching up. And then exhale, hands to the floor. And now we're going to shift back once again, trying to get the front leg to be straight. Now, you can do that two ways. You can do a little bit of both ways. One way is just shifting the hips back far enough, or maybe you shift the hips back and the, there's still a little bit of bend in this foot, uh, in this knee. Then you push the foot forward to try to straighten the leg, eventually flexing the foot up in front of you. Hands are still down on the floor. Again, you could use your blocks here, or you could just be up on fingertips. Take a big breath in. Think of sliding the chest forward and sliding the head, uh, sliding the chest towards the head. And then exhale, fold over that front leg. And take a breath or two there. Good. Now pull that front foot back in a little bit so you can put the foot down. Bend the knee to come forward. Tucking the back toes, straighten out that back leg, and then push the hips back again, re-straightening the front leg, but now both legs are straight. And breathe. Bend your front knee, step the back foot forward to come back to your forward fold for a moment. And then bending both knees, we're going to step the right foot back. Lunge position. 
drop the right knee to the floor. And same way at first, letting the upper body just rest on top of that front leg or just angle forward. Inhale here and then exhale, just shift back. The leg might not be completely straight, it's okay. Inhaling forward, just bringing it towards straight, just testing it out. And just go back and forth a couple more times. Inhaling forward, exhale. And now this next time, coming forward, inhale, we're going to raise the upper body up. So one hand and then the other on top of that front knee, fingers going forward, bring the torso up to vertical, maybe you back up a little bit when you do that, and option, lifting the arms up, palms facing in, reaching, reaching, reaching up towards the ceiling. Big breath in and then exhale, hands down either side of the front foot. And once again, we're going to shift back until we can straighten out that front leg. Option to straighten it out if you need is pushing the foot more forward. And then eventually mm, straightening that, uh, I mean, sorry, flexing that foot up. So. Here, taking another big breath in. Think of upper body going forward, chest sliding up towards the head. Exhale, fold over that front leg and in and out. Inhale, come back up. Walk the hands forward, bend the knee. You might need to pull the foot in a little bit. Tuck the back toes and straighten out that back leg. And same way. Straighten both legs now. So the, sh the shifting of the hips back to straighten out the front leg, both legs straight for a moment. And this time we're gonna bring the hands forward, try to plant the palms down, slide that front foot back to come to your downward facing dog for a moment. And then coming forward, Separate the knees wide, big toes still touching, and go back to a wide knee child's pose. Rest in here for a few breaths. Okay. After a few breaths in your child's pose, come back up. Bring your shoulders forward and just set the knees a little bit more together so they're just hip width apart. From here, we're gonna do a couple of cow cat. So inhale, arch the back, look up. Exhale, scoop the belly in and up, push the floor away, drop the head for your cat. Continuing a couple more times, inhaling for cow, exhaling for cat. Taking your time. Good. And after your next cat spine, just come to neutral spine. We're going to lower down onto the forearms. So pick a hand, whichever hand you want to start with. You're going to move that hand forward so that when you bend your elbow, Elbow comes down where your hand was. And you're ending up in this position with your forearms parallel to each other, palms facing down. From here, make sure your shoulders are aligned vertically over the elbows. And then stretch one leg back, the other leg back to come to your forearm plank for a moment. Let's just try holding a few breaths. You know, tightening that girdle around your core and slowly lowering down onto the belly, point the feet and the sternum and face lift up to vertical in your sphinx pose. As always, if you feel any pain in the lower back, 
you might want to just slide the hands forward more so you're lowering your chest towards the floor, a little bit less of a back bend if that is what you need, totally fine. You can still do a really nice aligned sphinx pose like this, pressing the tops of the feet down into the floor so the legs stay engaged. And just take a couple breaths. Next, we're going to move directly into locust. We're skipping cobra for the moment. Since we have our arms reaching forward, we're just going to try to keep the chest lifted off the floor and raise the arms forward, straighten them, and also lift the legs up off the floor. And just hold this for a couple breaths. Pointing the toes, take it from the very top of the hamstring, lifting up. Big breath in, and then as you exhale, release down, fold the hands on top of each other and rest your forehead down. Good. Since we're here, we'll go into a quad stretch. So propping yourself up on, let's say, Leave your right forearm in front. You can angle it across in front of you. Bend your left knee, pointing the toe. You might need to roll a little bit towards your right side. Reach back with the left hand and grab onto that foot. Pulling the top of the foot or the front of the ankle. Try to reorient yourself towards the floor. So the chest is going forward and you're just pulling the heel down towards the left foot. If possible, thinking of aiming the heel slightly to the outside. So not coming down to the center of the body, just tiny bit out to the outside, left side. Good. And then from here, last thing we're going to do, keep the heel hugging in. Last thing we're going to do in this position, not totally last thing we're going to do. Keep the heel hugging in towards the body, but try to lift the leg off the floor. So the front of the left thigh is lifting up off the floor. It helps to press the right leg down. See if you can lift that left leg off the floor. Pull it another breath or so, and then release down. Release the foot, straighten out the leg, and we'll switch to the other side. So left forearm across in front of you, and the right knee. You might turn a little bit to the left to be able to grab on there. Facing the floor again, just hold on to the top of the foot, front of the ankle, excuse me, and hugging the heel down towards the, the buttock a little bit to the outside, just slightly. And then the same way, you can press the left leg down and see if you can lift the front of the right thigh off the floor, any amount, while still hugging that heel in towards the butt. So you might just hover off the floor uh, a centimeter or so. And then release the foot, straighten out both legs, and you can rest your head down a couple more moments. Finally, we're going to turn over onto the back. So I think I'll just go a little bit more sideways here. Flip over onto your back, whichever direction makes sense. Resting down for a moment, bend the knees. Just finish up with a couple more little stretches. And we're going to do our figure four stretch. So we're going to oh, open up the hips a little bit. Cross your right ankle over the left knee. Keep that right foot flexed. Before we do anything else, you're just going to take your right hand and try gently pushing that knee away. It might not go very far. You're just testing out your range of motion there. And now we'll 
take it a little bit deeper. You're gonna keep the right foot flexed as you pick the left foot up off the floor. So the legs start coming in towards you. And reach around the left thigh, interlacing the fingers behind the hamstring. And just hugging the legs in towards you. You could also reach all the way to the front of the left shin if that's a reasonable thing to do, not necessary. Just makes it kind of easier to hold on to the legs if you're holding also on the shin, but you're getting the same stretch, even just holding around the hamstring, just hugging that in and taking a couple nice slow breaths. And slowly release, uncross that right ankle. Bring the right foot to the floor and cross the left ankle over the right knee. Same way, pushing that knee away gently, making sure the pelvis doesn't shift on the floor when you do that. Pelvis is maintaining its position and just moving the left leg away a little bit. All right, and then working on uh, deepening the stretch a little bit, pick up your right foot off the floor, left foot stays flex, and reach around to that hamstring. Behind the right hamstring, or again, you can hold the front of the shin, whichever seems easier to, to uh, allow you to hold on there. And hugging in any amount. As you continue to breathe, maybe each exhalation, try hugging a little bit more. Until you reach a place that seems like oh, it's a good place to stop. And finally, release the legs down, uncross the left ankle, both feet on the floor. And just do a quick bridge. So feet and legs parallel, hip width apart. Arms down alongside you, palms down. Inhale, push into the feet and lifting up into your bridge. Trying to keep the knees tracking forward, even thinking of pushing the knees forward, pushing them in the direction of your feet. And slowly lower back down. From here, we're just going to rest in a relaxation pose for a few moments. So as always, you're free to choose um, your position, your basic classical uh, final relaxation pose is just straightening the legs on the floor, letting the feet roll open any amount. Arms straight on the floor, also angled a little bit away from the body. Turn the palms up. Closing the eyes or half closing, whichever is more comfortable for you. And start to watch the breath as it slows down even more as you hold your still relaxation pose. All right. Just check the time. I think we're just at the end here. So when you're ready, you can, if you want, come to sit up. If you're just relaxing at home and you want to relax a little longer. Of course, totally welcome to do that. Otherwise, if you would like to come up to sit, 
roll over onto one side and slowly come up. And if you would like to hold your hands in prayer position, go ahead. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me for class today. It was a lot of fun. I will see you next time.